Let's talk about the Labradoodles and their history, where they came from, and what makes them such an incredibly high, such a, such a, a highly sought after dog uh, when you consider the fact that they used to be just called mutts. So let's talk about their history and let's talk about the pros and the cons. Uh, and let's talk about the different uh, types of Golden Doodles you can have. There's F1s and F2s and so on and so forth. And let's just lay everything out Golden Doodle. Hey, I'm Brian with Easy Retriever Training. Thanks for joining me and my little friend here. If you have name suggestions for this little guy, go ahead and leave them down below. Also, if you haven't, please click, hit the subscribe button. Okay, so first let's talk about the history of the Labradoodle, and it's pretty simple. Uh, in the 1980s, there was a man named Wally Conran in Australia who was breeding seeing eye dogs. And in his, you know, in, in his business, he came across a family who needed a seeing eye dog, but who also had uh, an allergy to, to the shedding or to the, the dander of a Labrador. And so they requested a hypoallergenic, a dog that wouldn't shed like the Labrador does. And so Wally came up with the idea of crossing a poodle, which is highly intelligent, but didn't shed with a Labrador. And in the efforts to do that, he created the Labradoodle. Uh, it, it became a, a hit. He was able to sell it as a hypoallergenic seeing eye dog. But in order to kind of expand the breed, they needed to come up with some kind of a marketing gimmick. Because in the 1980s, 1990s, nobody was interested in what we, what we referred to as mutts, these crossbreeds. They wanted an AKC or a UKC uh, purebred dog, one that you could track the genes with, uh, with their genealogy. And so they started, they came up with and coined the, the, the name Labradoodle and this idea of designer dogs was born. Uh, and so it, looking back in the late 2000s or early 2000s, uh, this same Wally Conran who created the designer breeds was quoted in several interviews as to saying that he regretted what he'd done and that he'd created a Frankenstein. Now my personal in, uh, opinion as he's talking about the, uh, if, if you go and look at the interviews, the context and everything else, it seems to me that what he's talking about is the craze of designer dogs, not the Labradoodle itself, but this craze uh, for designer dogs that do special things. And one of the problems that it's going to bring up is this idea, or one of the first cons that we want to talk about, or negative side to getting a Labradoodle, is the fact that you can't trace the genes. Um, you're paying, in most cases, more than what you'll pay for a regular Labrador with AKC or UKC papers where you can trace the genes and you can see what kind of health defects or, or what they either, the family either has or doesn't have. You can look for, you know, you can check eyes and hips and so forth. On the flip side of that, when you get a, a Labradoodle, you're paying AKC papered prices or more with no ability to track that uh, or to predict how those two breeds might interact. Uh, you could look down and see down the Labrador side and say, oh, there's, there's no hip problems, there's no eye problems. You can look down the poodle side. But once those two genes cross and you, your first generation Labradoodle, there's no way of telling what you're going to get. You can get anything from looking just like mom, if mom's the Labradoodle, uh, sorry, if mom's the Labrador, you can get anything that looks just like mom and still sheds. Uh, to uh, all the way along the spectrum to something that looks a lot like dad, same color, when it comes to color or hair length or wavy, you know, non-shedding type hair. There's no guarantee what you're going to get. So the first negative uh, with regards to the designer dogs is you're going to lose all predictability. Okay, so the next thing we want to talk about is just intelligence level, uh, trainability, those kinds of things when it comes to a Labradoodle. The good thing about a Labradoodle cross, and one of the reasons why it's, if you're going to go with a designer dog, why it's so popular is the fact that Labradors are some of the most trainable dogs there are. It's one of the reasons why they're the most popular breed in, in America or Britain and really quite frankly throughout the world. Uh, Labradors are highly trainable and that's because they have a super high desire to please. Uh, they want to make you happy as the trainer. On the flip side of that, Poodles are one of the most intelligent dogs, uh, one of the most intelligent breeds, uh, according to the AKC and UKC. I think they put them in the top five as far as dog intelligence when it comes to the different breeds. Uh, that's super good as far as it leads to trainability. However, a Poodle's desire to please 
is not as high as a as is not as high as a Labrador's, and so there might be time. Uh, we had a Labrador. We had a Labrador poodle cross once, and it was interesting. As as I was training this dog, even as a young puppy, you could see that he was thinking about, or at least it seemed like to me, you could see that he was thinking about whether or not he wanted to uh, to mind you, and uh, and that can be frustrating sometimes. I don't want a dog trying to decide whether he's going to mind me or not. I want a dog that's just going to mind. Uh, with a Labrador, you, send, you, you have a greater probability of getting that dog that's just going to mind you every single time because that's what the dog lives for. On the flip side of that, you may have to work a little bit harder to get a poodle to, uh, to, to mind you. But once you get him conditioned to those responses, uh, he usually picks up pretty quickly. All right, so the next thing we want to talk about when we talk about uh, Labradoodles, and, and if you're trying to decide whether you want one or not, uh, a Labradoodle's energy level... Uh, again, just to remind you, you can get anything in between from mom to dad. Uh, when it comes to Labradors and Poodles, both dogs need a lot of, uh, a lot of exercise. Uh, both are originally uh, working dogs. And what I mean by working dogs is that they're actually both hunting dogs. Poodles were a retriever, uh, a retrieving breed over in Germany and were used for bird hunting. Um, in fact, if you go and refer, there's a, there's a great uh, Duck Dynasty episode where Uncle Cy buys a poodle to replace a retriever and everybody makes fun of him for it, but the dog works because they were originally used, they were originally bred to be bird retrievers. Uh, and then Labradors, you know, most people are familiar with the history there. Again, like the, they're, they're working dogs. They're meant to be out in the fields working a lot. That means that a Labradoodle is probably going to have high energy needs, a lot like a Labrador or a, a Poodle. And you're going to want to give them a lot of exercise. You're going to want to get them outside a lot, let them stretch their legs. Uh, a bored dog that is meant to get a lot of work, a, a bored working dog, is going to can turn destructive because out of boredom, not because they're bad dogs, but just because they're bored. So, whatever you get, uh, a Labradoodle, whenever you, if you decide on a Labradoodle, just have expectations that the dog's gonna have a lot of energy and you're gonna have to get them outside quite a bit so they can burn that off so they can come in and, and be a good, a good house dog. All right, the other thing we're gonna wanna talk about is a Labradoodle temperament uh, or their personalities. Um, Labradoodles, uh, most Labradoodles, again, every Doodles, uh, Specific personality is going to vary, and that some of that's going to be from parents, the nature side of things. But there's also some nurture side of it, and that's going to do to that's going to be due to socialization. Um, and so, most of most Labradoodles, like their parents, the Labrador or the Poodle, are going to be really good around children. Uh, they're going to be good house dogs if they get enough exercise, and uh, and they're going to have just a, a real family friendly personality. And so for those of you who are looking for it, that's, that's what made these dogs, these designer dogs particularly um, popular is the fact that they do so well with families and they do well indoors. Uh, how well they do outdoors as far as enduring the cold, that's going to depend on the coat, the specific coat you've got. You can see that this guy's got a little bit longer, uh, a little bit straighter coat. He's got just a little bit of curl there at the end. That's from the poodle. Uh, but really kind of a straight hair. It's not a real tight curl. That means this puppy's probably going to shed a little bit. Uh, will not shed as much as a, a normal Labrador, but probably shed a little bit more than his dad, who was the poodle. Uh, if you'd found a puppy with a tighter curl, that tighter curl that looks more like the poodle puppy, that puppy's going to shed even less than this guy does. Um, so one thing, when a puppy's 11 weeks old, it's easy to look at them and say, oh, that's the perfect size. But uh, you're going to want to know how big Labradoodles are going to get. Most of them, somewhere between, depending on which size you get. And your breeder should be able to tell you if you're getting a mini Labradoodle, a medium-sized Labradoodle, or a regular size or standard-sized Labradoodle. Standard-sized Labradoodles like this guy, they're going to range somewhere between 45 and 60, 65 pounds. Um, if it's an F1, you always have the potential, meaning a first generation, you always have the potential that they get a little bit bigger like their mom. The Labradors can get up to 80 pounds. Uh, and so it's possible that your, your Labradoodle gets to 75 pounds. Uh, a miniature Labradoodle is going to be somewhere in the range of 15 to 30 pounds on the big side. And then a medium-sized Labradoodle somewhere between 30 and 45, 50 pounds. When it comes to whether or not these dogs shed, I already told you this guy, um, it looks like this guy is going to shed. Now he's shedding all over me, but that's because at 11, 12 weeks old, he's blowing out his puppy coat. Every, every dog that I know of is going to blow out a puppy, their puppy fur. Uh, as they get a little bit older and they're going to and and so every dog for that matter sheds a little bit at the beginning uh, but when it comes to 
hypoallergenic and, and puppies, labradoodle puppies, and labradoodle dogs is full grown. Whether they shed or not is going to depend on what genes they got from which parent. And so if they, if your puppy's fur looks more like the Labrador's parents, if you've got a first generation and they, the fur looks more like a lab's parent, the, the, their lab mom or their lab dad, then you're probably going to have some shedding with that dog. It won't be as bad as a full bred Labrador, but it is gonna shed probably more than you hoped. Uh, one of the answers to that is to look for an FB2 or an F2 uh, Labradoodle, which just means a second generation Labradoodle. Basically what that means is that you've got uh, at least one parent that is, a, that is a Labradoodle, meaning half Labrador, half Poodle, and then the other parent is a full bred la uh, Poodle. That's gonna give you actually 75% Poodle and 25% Labrador, and that's going to be your best chance for not having uh, a dog that sheds all over your carpet. Okay, one of the things you're gonna to, to know is, you know, what is your Labradoodle gonna look like? And the reality is, is just like every, one, every other one of their traits, a first generation Labradoodle is gonna vary as much uh, as, as, it, as possible between looking just like their Labrador parent versus looking just like their Poodle parent or something in between. Uh, they can have anything from a really tight, uh, curly hair like a Poodle to really straight hair. They can have the big blocky head like a, a Labrador or the skinny head uh, of a Poodle. They can have the thick shoulders or the skinny tall look. It, it really varies uh, quite a bit. You can see this guy here, he looks uh, a little bit more like his Labrador parent with, the, with his head. Uh, his coat looks a little bit like his Labrador parent. But this guy has an apricot uh, poodle dad while his mom was a, a very light colored yellow lab. And, uh, and you can see he took on the apricot coloring of his dad. Uh, he's got a brother, the breeder told me, that almost looked gray compared to, uh, compared to his coat. And so, but was much, but had a real, a much tighter curl. Okay, so when it comes down to it, would I get a Labradoodle? Uh, I absolutely, I think Labradoodles are awesome. I, I think, uh, I think you're, you know, several generations away from seeing the AKC actually accept Labradoodles as a breed, um, which I, I don't know if that's important, you know, whether that's important to you or not. But uh, I do think that this particular designer breed, this particular mixture has two really high quality dogs that are excellent around families, that are great around children and other dogs. Uh, when you talk about the variety that you're gonna have, um, the, the variety, it's not like you're going from uh, the kindness of a Labradoodle to the aggression of a Rottweiler or a, a, a Pitbull. Uh, both Poodles and Labradors are super excellent breeds. And so crossing them, and, and most of the people that I've seen that have had them have absolutely loved their, have loved their dogs. So I, I think a Labradoodle, if you're looking for uh, an active uh, go out, go hiking with you, even hunting, I've, I've heard of people training their Labradoodles to hunt. Uh, if you're looking for an active family dog, a Labradoodle is a good choice.